We're very happy to have the 2019-2020 Marshall Lecturer with us today, Paul Milgram. He's the Shirley R. and Leonard W. Ely Jr. Professor of Humanities and Sciences at Stanford, a Senior Fellow of the Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research, a Fellow of the Econometric Society, a Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and a member of the National Academy of Sciences and Chair of the Economic Section. Well, we're very honored to have you in Cambridge to present the 2019-2020 uh, Marshall Lecture. Uh, the title is Market Design When Resource Allocation is NP-Hard. Can you give us a brief uh, introduction to your talk? Well, sure. It has to do with um, modern market design, where we're working in some really complicated allocation problems, anything from um, landing planes on uh, runways or scheduling trains or allocating radio spectrum where the, um, the problems are hard and solutions are hard to compute. And the question is how to set up markets in those contexts. Can you tell me what you mean exactly when you, when you talk about market design? Market design is all the rules and procedures that govern how a market works. And that can include things like the information we give to the participants, how we decide who matches with who, or, or who is assigned which resources, or how the prices are set. All of those things are part of the uh, designing a market. You're well known for your work uh, designing the FCC incentive auction. Can you tell us exactly what that was and what the biggest challenges were? Well, the FCC incentive auction was about taking uh, radio spectrum that was previously used for broadcast television, uh, taking some of the low value broadcasters and moving them off the air by compensating them in, in an auction process and uh, reorganizing the other broadcasters into a smaller number of channels and then creating uh, broadband licenses which were to be sold from the cleared spectrum. The challenge is this was uh, historically complicated in terms of the, uh, the computations that were involved. It's very complicated figuring out how to assign uh, channels to broadcasters in ways that avoid interference and how to deal with treaties with Mexico and Canada and uh, how to uh, gener generally how to do the resource allocation. So that was uh, uh, a novel challenge, the most difficult such auction ever, actually. And then the other big novel challenge was figuring out how to decide how many channels to clear. And there, actually, as you'll hear in my Marshall lecture, um, we adapted some of Marshall's ideas to, uh, to de determine that computation. Now, going back to how you, you perform this resource allocation, how do you balance the need to efficiently allocate the resources while also generating revenue for the FCC? Yeah, so that's a standard part of auction design. It, it turns out in this particular auction design, the, uh, the cost that we paid to acquire the resources and the, uh, and the revenues were a big part of the efficiency as well because the, in order to clear um, radio spectrum uh, for, for broadband use, you needed to keep the uh, cost of that acquisition low and the revenue from the sales high so that you could afford to do the, uh, the transfer. So cost and revenues were uh, part of, the, uh, of efficiency in that case as well. Now it turns out that in general the um, trade-offs between uh, cost and efficiency are not that difficult. The, the, you can often uh, at relatively small efficiency cost drastically reduce the uh, the cost of acquiring spectrum. We think we did that, um, and, and possibly also uh, increase the revenues from the sales. And we did a little bit of that too. Now, in an auction like this, you had buyers and sellers of spectrum who obviously had their own uh, interests um, and obviously wanted to outsmart your mechanism. So, how do you handle that adversarial situation where? Uh, these players are sort of trying to outsmart you. So there's actually two different, completely different parts to the adversarial situation. This, the whole thing is a political process. And uh, so we had to deal with all the parties who uh, cared a great deal about how much they were gonna get for their television stations, for example, depending mm -hmm. on the rules of the process. And they lobbied about the rules. And we, of course, needed to be responsive to that because we wanted the participation of those parties, so we had to separate the wheat from the chaff, what were legitimate concerns and less legitimate concerns. So that was the political side. And on the other side of the process, one of the fundamental ideas in market design is designing a process that's going to be played by self-interested parties. So we anticipate that in advance and try to come up with rules that will perform well even when everybody is um, behaving in their own interests. 
Now, with this, all this work you have done sort of advising industry, uh, can you tell me how that's played into your academic work and also how your academic work has uh, contributed to your work in industry? So the, the work that I've done in practice has been a wonderful source of new problems for me to work on. In fact, the, the lecture I just gave today that you attended yeah. was about uh, new research that I'm doing that's inspired by some of the uh, uh, new procedures we're creating. So we're analyzing how they work and, um, and creating um, uh, new and better ways to allocate resources. And then we're taking those innovations and we're implementing them in, uh, in practical problems. So the, the two are very tightly connected and it's really quite lovely to have the opportunity to do both. Now, I know a lot of um, online marketplaces are, are building up now. Um, there's Uber, um, Lyft, and um, how do you think market design uh, affects sort of new digital industries? Well, they spend a lot of effort in thinking about the rules of the auctions. You know, over the years, Google, for example, has changed the rules multiple times. Facebook has had to change the rules as the kinds of ads that they sell uh, changed. Uber has, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much of it you would call market design. The boundaries kind of blur a little bit, but the, uh, the way they uh, match riders and drivers together has evolved over time as they learn what's going on and try to run their operations more efficiently. Finally, think about some of the biggest challenges facing the world right now, like climate change or financial stability. Uh, do you see ways that market design um, will play a role in providing solutions for these issues? Well, market design already does play a role in providing solution for some of these things. Uh, one of my favorite recent examples was the design of uh, an auction for fisheries in, the New, in New South Wales. There, that was a cap and trade kind of situation like we have in many uh, environmental markets where we want to limit exploitation and then uh, allocate the limited rights in an efficient way. And they had the particular difficulty there with reduced allocations that some fishermen were going to need to go out of business. How are we going to handle that and buy their existing rights and transfer them to the uh, fishers, who, uh, fishermen who are going to stay in business. Uh, that's a complicated problem, and uh, doing it well leaves people a little happier than they would be than just simply <laughs> having being forced out of business, and, uh, and helps promote uh, 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 preservation of the environment. Well, uh, thank you, and I look forward to your lectures tomorrow and Wednesday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks.